Annette Benning is a four-time Oscar nominee whose acting career spans more than four illustrious decades. She was just nominated for a SAG Award for her latest project, diving into the role of Diana Nyad, who purported to be the first person ever to swim over 100 miles from Cuba to Florida's coast. She sat down with Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang. Annette Benning. Welcome. Thank you. I just want to know, we know and love you from your incredible body of work, everything from the grifters to American Beauty, all the way to the kids are all right. And I know that you spent your teens, though, in San Diego working on a boat, actually scuba diving. Tell us a little bit about your being drawn to acting and how spending that time in the water might have helped you in this role. Ah, that was lucky, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> I, I certainly never anticipated playing a marathon swimmer. As a kid, I worked on a scuba diving boat, um, and I got certified when I was 16. Part of the certification is that you have to jump off of a boat. You have to do an ocean dive. So we went out on this boat, and then subsequently I got a job on the boat. So I cooked on the boat for a year. And so I did spend a lot of time in the water. That was definitely helpful. I, I love being in the water, but I had never been a trained swimmer. And I know you spent a lot of time on stage before breaking through in movies, but before we dive deeper, let's take a quick look at a clip from the film. Great. Diana, stop, stop. I, I can, look I over can there. make it up. Look over I, there. You I'm see that? Getting out of you see that? The horizon? Look at the horizon. You see it? Uh, is it the sun? No. That's not the sun, babe. Those are the lights of Key West. Diana, what I'm telling you is... It's not going to be another night. It, just one big push. If you can really bring it, if you can really, really bring it, then you're going to reach Florida today. Uh, now, I know you're one of the greats when it comes to acting, but you look like you're in agony in that <laughs> clip. Um, tell us a little bit about the training process. I know you trained with an Olympian, and you spent three to maybe eight hours a day in the water? Well, it was, I loved the training. I didn't train that much per day, but I had about a year to get ready. And I approached it with a lot of uh, humility, quite frankly, because I had sort of underestimated what it was gonna take. I also, I think when I first got into it, didn't really know how much I would actually do. So I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the swimming and the challenge. And I think that's a, something we all kind of want and need in our lives is a new challenge, a new skill, and something new to open up to. So that ended up just being a joy. And, and I still swim. I love it. I read that you had two stunt doubles who really didn't have a lot to do. <laughs> well, I, did, I thought it might not look right, you know, yeah. if somebody else did it. Yeah. It shows. You can see all of the physicality of it. But I'm interested, you know, one of the big themes is that it's not just a physical challenge that mm. she underwent. It was the, the mental toughness. I I've always studied athletes. Mm. They're amazing, especially the great ones in their mentality. Um, but every athlete has to stop. And, and Diane is very eloquent in her book, talking about what that was like for her to have been a marathon swimmer all of her 20s. She retired. She was done. And so it never really left her that thirst for that, that feeling of when you're an athlete and you're trying to reach a certain goal. So when she turned 60, just because of a number of circumstances in her life, she decided that was the time. And, and when she told Bonnie, who Jody plays, Jody Foster plays, her best friend, like, I need to do this and I need you to do it with me, um, Bonnie said, you're 60. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. You couldn't do it when you were 20. And what Diana says is that she has something up here now that she didn't have before mm. and that she was convinced that because of her brain and because of her life experience and who she had become as a person that she thought she could do it. And tell me about working with your co-star Jodie Foster. You have legendary careers, both of you. What was it like playing off of her and, and to what extent was it sort of metaphor for women of a certain age in Hollywood too? Well, uh, Jodie is one of the best. She's an overall movie maker. She directs she writes, she can produce. She's been in the business since she was four or five years old. Right, literally. So it, she was an incredible asset in terms of narrative structure as well. But just in the moment to moment play, I mean, she's just an incredible person and so giving. And we, we did become friends. We've become good friends. And I'm, I'm very grateful to her. And you were both nominated for SAG and for Golden Globes. It's very exciting. Um, the, the movie is based in part on Diana's memoir, right? And yes. you lean into sort of the prickly personality of it. Jodie Foster's character says, you know, you have a superiority complex and it's all about me, me, me. 
What made you unafraid to lean into that part of her character? Well, I don't know. I, I think some of these things are judged differently when it's a woman than mm. when it's a man. What extreme athlete who can swim 54 hours is just going to be a nice, sweet, pleasant personality all the time? By the way, she is. She's an incredibly charismatic, warm, loving woman. But yes, she did have this obsession. and. I also, she allowed us to take a few liberties because we needed to create a character arc for mm. her. Outside of, of your roles, I'd be curious how you address this idea of having it all. You've had this 30-year marriage, you have four grown kids and this incredible career. What do you say to young people who ask you about this elusive idea of having it all? Oh, there's a lot of um, illusion in fame and it comes with the territory. So it's part of how we have to navigate it ourselves, what people project onto us mm. versus who we, we actually are. I, I don't know, I, I love the work, I love the craft, and I loved it before I became famous. So I was as dedicated and, and enjoyed it just as much at that point. So I'm kind of lucky that I did have a, almost all of my 20s before I became a more public person. I think it helped. You are true to form, uh, gracious and a true pro. Thank you so much, Annette Benning. Thank you. For joining Thanks for us. having me. Our thanks to Juju. And you can watch Annette Benning now in NIAD streaming on Netflix. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.